Hello and welcome to Apple Autos. My name is Austin and today we're taking a peek at the all new Chevrolet Colorado ZR2. The new Colorado ZR2 I believe is the coolest mid-sized truck on the market. Today I'm going to do an in-depth tour of the ZR2, tell you some facts and show you some things you probably didn't know, so let's get into it. Before we get too far into the video, I need to say that this vehicle is currently available for sale at Apple Chevrolet Northfield here in Northfield, Minnesota. There's a link down in the description below where you can go check out this Colorado. It is currently $500 off of MSRP, so if you are interested, be sure to check out the link down in the description below. Let's get started. We're going to start this video off at the heart of the Colorado, which is right under the hood here, a 2.7 liter four cylinder turbo with 430 pound feet of torque, 310 horsepower. It's about a 40 torque bump over the outgoing Colorado's V6, which is replaced with two less cylinders, making more power and more torque. In the higher models, it does have a little bit more power and torque because this is now the standard motor across the entire Colorado lineup. It is a very healthy amount of power out of a four cylinder and a healthy amount of power just in general out of a truck that's in this size and this class. So that is a very impressive little motor that we have here inside of the Colorado. And it does appear to be pretty easy to work on and access at everything under the hood since it is such a small little package. Let's continue moving around the outside of the Colorado. A few more things I'd like to touch on before we start moving around the outside on the motor, and that would be its overall sound and drivability. Now, I got to put a couple of miles on this Colorado today and had the experience to sit behind the wheel and enjoy that 2.7 liter. And I must say, from the factory, it sounds quite good. It has a really good exhaust tone to it. Why don't you guys quick take a listen? Not only does it sound good, but it is enjoyable to drive. It has a good amount of power, good amount of torque, plenty of get up and go, and paired to the transmission that it is hooked up to, it's actually a really enjoyable powertrain that puts a smile on your face that's a lot of fun to drive. Now, moving up front of the ZR2, which is the off-road version of the Colorado, which is pretty obvious to tell with a lot of the stuff that they have going on on it. The ZR2 over the standard Colorado gets quite a few things, including some upgraded bumpers, 33 inch tires, these side rock rails, this underbody skid plate protection, which also has a secondary skid plate that covers the transfer case to ensure that when you're off-roading, you don't damage anything super important. Of course, we get an entirely redesigned front end. And something that's also cool is this bow tie. As you can see, it is cut out um, to improve airflow into the motor, which of course helps with that power being a turbo motor. Now, one of the things that's kind of cool about this bow tie is if you guys aren't aware of where this came from, it really originally came out in 2015. Chevrolet was out to build the most insane Camaro that they possibly could. Now, what they did was they took the Camaro, they stripped it down to absolutely nothing to make it the most track focused and track oriented vehicle that they have ever made to outperform the Corvette. So what they did is they took the Corvette's Z06's motor and put it inside of a Camaro, the LS7, brought back the nameplate Z28, and it was the most insane Camaro ever built. Now, when they were testing this Camaro, one of the engineers took a Dremel and they were trying to figure out how they could get more airflow into the front of this Camaro being this massive LS7 that needed as much air as it possibly could take. So they took this Dremel, and they cut out the inside of the Chevy logo and found out, I don't remember the exact number, but it was just an ever so slight amount more airflow got inside of the motor because of the hollow Chevy logo. And now we are seeing that back here again on the Colorado. Some of the other things I really like about the Colorado are the exposed red tow hooks. They look very aggressive. The new updated front end and the new body style Colorado, I think looks amazing, extremely aggressive looking, by far the coolest truck that's out right now. However, this truck does have some serious competition coming here shortly with the new Ford Ranger Raptor coming out very soon, as well as the Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro. Now, this is not the competitor to the TRD Pro or the Raptor. This is just the 
step below because there's actually a Colorado that's even higher than this. Now for 2023, they named this the Desert Boss. However, they are ending that for 2023. And for 2024, they are re-releasing the Colorado Bison, which was previously the highest trim of the Colorado. I don't have full specs on the Bison yet, but it is to come here shortly. The new Colorado Bison gets quite a few more upgrades, even over the ZR2, about another $10,000. Now on that Desert Boss, we did get some really cool features like a big hoop uh, on the front bumper with some LED pod fog lights. We do still have some nice LED fog lights built in or integrated to the bumper just on the standard ZR2. And we also got this really cool truck bed uh, piece back here that also added a factory light bar, which looked extremely cool. Now, personally, I don't think those trucks are worth it because they're an additional $10,000, the um, Desert Boss and the Bison over this Colorado, which has an MSRP of $50,735, which is a lot of money for a midsize truck, but you gotta see how much more these midsize trucks are packing than they used to uh, just a few years ago. Here on the side of the Colorado, we also get a great view at what you get on the ZR2, which are these rock rails, which look absolutely fantastic, but it is a little bit weird not having a running board on this vehicle getting in and out of it because as it sits right now it has uh, I believe just under 11 inches or just under 10 inches I'll put it up on the screen right here of ground clearance as it sits so getting in and out of the Colorado is uh, it's a step up to say the least as you can see here it's uh it's quite a ways up there this vehicle so not having a step is a little bit awkward I'm not gonna lie now the Colorado ZR2 comes standard with 33 inch wheels and tires. And I must say they look very aggressive. I do love this wheel design. They look very cool. And if we look inside of the wheels, we can see these Multimatic shocks. Now, if you guys have heard of Multimatic before, you may be wondering where from, and that is because they built some of the coolest Ford GTs that we have ever seen before. They make some fantastic shocks to get this Colorado ready to do some extreme off-roading. Around back of the Colorado, what I really like from the side angles on this thing are just how wide and aggressive the hips are. If you actually look at it directly down from the side, just take the taillight and everything out of it, it kind of surprises me how similar the body lines are to like making it look like a baby Ram TRX. Kind of interesting, but check out this angle here and you'll see what I mean. I think it looks very similar to the TRX when we look at those body body lines. As we look at the back bumper here on the Colorado, you can see the improved approach angles that we get with the ZR2. And we, we open up the bed right next to uh, the handle here. We do have a rear view camera. We have some cool mountains that are on the top of the tailgate, but there's something that's kind of unique in here that we haven't seen in many other trucks. If we actually pull these two panels to unlock here, we have some in-bed storage, which is watertight. So it's kind of like we have a bed inside of a bed, kind of interesting or a trunk inside of a bed, but it's cool that this is watertight. It also features a drain. So what I think would be cool is throw some ice in here, a bunch of drinks, and you have yourself a pretty awesome tailgater truck out in the middle of who knows where. The back of this Colorado also does feature an outlet so you can plug in whatever you need and take a peek at that amazing looking ZR2 logo integrated into the bed's bed liner. It does look quite cool. I kind of like how on the Colorado, this like gas cap has some dimension to it, the way that it like almost makes a new body line. Kind of interesting, haven't seen that on many other cars, but there's like three separate body lines on the gas cap itself, which is pretty cool. But all in all, that kind of wraps up the exterior of the Colorado. Um, there is a ruler on the tailgate, forgot to bring that up. Of course, we have that awesome rear sliding window. Uh, all in all though, this thing's awesome. This is like the coolest looking midsize truck that's out in my opinion. Really, really, really good look to it. Very aggressive looking and it is ready to go on an off-road adventure. I think this thing would look killer with like a full on overlanding rig in the bed up top. Um, it's ready to go. It's really dang cool. Let's go ahead and hop on the inside of this, which I'm really excited for because it's currently like negative five outside and it feels like negative 15 or so. This is not enjoyable here in Minnesota. It's very, very chilly out, but let's go ahead and hop inside, see what the interior is all about, then we'll take it for a drive. We're gonna start off by getting in back of the Colorado, seeing what the back seats are all about. We do have our floor mat sitting right here and right off the bat, 
the color that they use for these seats is very unique because it's like a gray. It's like a gray leather. And then in many other ZR2 models, including the Silverado, they have this like yellow stitching. I think it looks really good. Some people hate it. I personally think it's very cool and I really like it. It doesn't go well with some colors on the exterior, um, but it does go very well with this black and it does go very well with some other colors as well. But on this particular model, I think it looks very good. Hopping into here, like I brought up earlier, it's awkward. Like there's no running board and I'm five foot 11 and that is, that is a step to get inside of this thing. Like it is, that's a big truck with no running board. Ugh. I have the seat up front where I am comfortable being five foot 11. And overall, I'm, I'm very comfortable back here. These seats have a lot of cushion to them, like a lot of cushion to them. I'm very pleasantly surprised how much cushion there is in these seats. Very comfortable spot to be. Armrest in the center here is very comfortable. We're gonna shut the door quick here to confirm that if you're claustrophobic, oh no, the child lock's on. Well, I'm stuck guys. I'm gonna awkwardly make my way. It's a brand new car. I really don't wanna get my shoes in here. My bad, I'm sorry. Oh, I gotta watch my feet. Oh boy. Oh, I should not have gone about this this way. Uh-oh. I guess I'll get out on the passenger side so I don't get my shoes anywhere. I made it back out. My bad. Uh, the child lock works. Um, it's now off. That way that uh, anybody that crawls back there doesn't get stuck. That was awkward, my bad. But overall sitting back there, I'm not gonna lie, when I had the armrest down, it felt a little bit claustrophobic if that's an issue for you. Personally, I was very comfortable. I like that feeling of, of being hugged almost because it is kind of tight, but it's very comfortable being tight. You got good arm sitting position on both sides. The seats I was pleasantly surprised with and I had good headroom. So back of the Colorado, I give two thumbs up for four adults inside of the Colorado. Middle seat might be a little bit tight for four adults, but you could easily do three kids back there. Let's hop up front and see what that's all about. Up front in the old Colorado, hopping in here. I love the steering wheel on this thing. We do have heated seats, ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, and just the overall feel and look of the steering wheel. Like, love the look of it in this thing. Did have to start it back up there. It's been running for about 30 minutes out here, so it automatically shuts itself off. But the overall interior is very subtle when it comes to ZR2 badges. We only have one of them, surprisingly. Uh, definitely thought that there would be more. You can't really tell you're in a super special truck. However, looking out over the hood should be enough of a giveaway. I love the design on the hood, the way that we go from the gloss black to the matte black with the aggressive haunches in the middle. I do really, really quite like that. Um, otherwise, in the interior, we have some very minimal camo accents, our yellow stitching, and the ZR2 badge up on the passenger dashboard. So very, very subtle, um, but I do like it. It's, it's kind of minimalist uh, with the two screens, especially when they're off. There's really not a whole lot going on. Um, but what I do really, really like is in this vehicle, we still have physical buttons for our climate control. We can control them through the screen, but we have physical buttons as well which just make it easier to navigate, easier to quickly use. Something else that's kind of fun is our vents here. They remind me a lot of like the Camaro and the Blazer, the big circular vents, um, very similar design. However, of course, they don't have any controls there uh, other than just opening and closing the vents where in the Camaro and the Blazer, you turn your temperature and stuff. Um, but it's just a similar design. So I thought that was kind of fun seeing that move, uh, move across different models. Uh, we do have these really cool looking like piano dials for our lockers, very similar to like a Rams piano dials. Um, so we have a rear locker, front and rear locker. And then we also have this interesting button that rolls all of the windows down at the same time. Um, in case you want them all down at the same time, but it doesn't roll them all up. You can stop them from rolling down, but you have to go back to your keypad over here to roll them all up. I don't really know why you can't roll them all back up, I'd almost rather have a switch where you could roll them all back up opposed to rolling them all down, but hey, that's just me. The infotainment inside of the Colorado is amazing. Super, super easy to use, very fast, very high quality. Uh, we also have some amazing driver information up here, uh, depending on what you're doing. Now the ZR2 does have an optional underbody camera. This one does not have it installed as a factory option, but the underbody camera is of course uh, very awesome if you are 
pushing the uh, Colorado off-road and would like to see what's going on in front of you or underneath you to make sure you clear the rock or the inside of your tire is not going to hit. But we do have some fun stuff in here uh, that I haven't seen in other uh, vehicles, one of them being air down mode, which is kind of fun. So you set the target tire pressure that you want your tires to be at here in the Colorado. You go out there and as you let air out of the tire, the vehicle will honk when you hit the target amount of tire. So you can pick whatever you'd like, whether you're just filling up for your normal commute at like 35, 36 PSI, it'll honk for you if you're a little low, or if you're filling up uh, or lowering down to go over some rocks, you can bring it down as low as 10 PSI, and it'll honk when you get it down there. Now, one of the other things about the ZR2, opposed to the upcoming Bison um, and the Desert version, I can't remember the exact name of it, that is outgoing. Those two have beadlock capable wheels from the factory, the ZR2 does not. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind as well when you're looking between the two of them. Now, some other cool tech that I found inside of this screen is if we go over to our off-road mount, we have some very, very useful um, uh, tech that is built into this thing that tells us our g-forces steering angle uh if we're in two-wheel drive four-wheel drive transfer case pitch roll tire psi we have an overlanding mode with a, a compass um and our all, all types of stuff like our elevation and it, it's it's pretty dang cool we also have our drive modes that show up through this screen here we do have some a few selectable drive modes and it's kind of interesting that they just took the exact same photo of the colorado and just laid it over a different background for these different drive modes, which is cool. Like, I think it looks good, but like with all these crazy animations that we've been seeing and all these other makes and models of vehicles, especially with the startup animation that we have in the Colorado, which is this really cool Chevy flying across the screen, kind of surprised that that's all that they did for that. So not super unique, but it's still cool. Overall, the interior of the Colorado, I give the thing two thumbs up. This truck is awesome inside and out. Let's go take it for a drive and wrap up the video. Now, sitting behind the wheel of the Chevy Colorado, overall, I'm a very big fan of the sitting position. I think it's a very comfortable spot to be, and uh, the overall visibility in the Colorado is quite good. Excuse the window sticker that's sitting there, but the visibility is very great, and it's a very comfortable area to be. I do quite like it, and it's also very adjustable. We do have a manually adjusting steering wheel in this, which I think it should be power, personally, being at the price point that it's at, but uh, it does give us lots of adjustment. We, of course, do have the power drive driver seat and with movement of mirrors and everything you can sit down nice and low and you have the window at kind of a shoulder position which i've always personally not been a fan of in the toyota tacoma which you do feel like you sit up kind of high end so you do feel like you're sitting in it not on it um which I personally have never really liked about the Tacoma, which is, of course, in this same class of truck. Um, I do think it's a super comfortable truck to be in. It is a little bit stiff driving around. You do feel every little bump here and there, but you kind of have to expect that for a vehicle that is in this off-road of class. You're going to you're going to feel that, especially being, of course, a body-on-frame truck. Um, it's just kind of expected. Uh, you have to get used to it. It's a bit cold out here, but let's get on it and see what it has. Struggling with traction a bit. Overall, it is a pretty quick little truck. It's got a lot of get up and go. And I have to admit, I love the sound that it has to it. It has a really, really good tone. And I like the little red line indication that it has on the center cluster here. We're gonna let it downshift for me and I'm gonna get on it one more time just to see what it has in it. The get up and go from a roll is very impressive out of this little four cylinder. It has a lot of pickup and it feels very peppy and torquey. Overall, this truck is quite easy to drive around and with all of the interior or exterior camera options that you can view on the interior, it makes it very easy to park and maneuver on a day-to-day -day basis, even with its very aggressive hood. Uh, you can't really see over the front of it at all. It's very aggressive. Um, it, you still feel quite confident moving it around just with all the cameras and safety features that it has to offer in it. And it's pretty easy to drive. It's very comfortable. It makes you feel big and tough sitting behind the wheel with that aggressive hood. Um, and I, I don't know, I'm just a really big fan of this truck. Like everything about it is right up my alley. I think it's super cool. I think it's the coolest midsize truck that's available on the market right now. And I think at the price point that it's at, it's a lot of truck for the money. It's really, 
really cool. I personally would take this over a Silverado all day. I get it doesn't have the same towing capabilities, but I just think everything about it is cooler. I did park the Colorado next to an available Silverado Trail Boss that we have sitting on the lot. That way you just have a little bit of a visual comparison on how big it is. It is not a small vehicle. The Colorado is still a pretty decent sized truck. And all in all, to wrap things up, this thing is amazing. I love everything about it. It has amazing tech, a great look on the outside. It's super comfortable. I think this is one of the best new vehicles Chevy has redesigned in quite a while. Uh, probably since the C8 Corvette. Like this, this is a really, really cool truck. I'm a huge fan of it and I'm really excited for that Ranger Raptor and the new Ranger to start hitting our Ford stores. I'm also excited to see what Toyota has to offer with the new Tacoma, but I think this thing has a huge impact and it's going to be a heavy hitter in this segment. This is a really cool little truck and you guys should definitely scoop it up. So be sure to check out the link down in the description below so you guys can come in to Northfield and test drive and check out this amazing Chevy Colorado because all in all, I'm extremely impressed. I think this is an amazing, amazing little truck. And I'd love to know what you guys think of the new Colorado down in the comments below. I personally was a big fan of the outgoing Colorado as well. And I'm slightly upset that they got rid of the diesel option. Um, just because I thought it was really cool that you could get, uh, you know, that cool, the cool diesel Colorado Bison. But I still think that this 2.7 is an amazing motor, and it's a great replacement for the V6, in my opinion. Um, so I'm really excited to see overall what people end up doing with these. This is going to be a really fun truck that people are going to push to the limits off road, go do some overlanding in. This is a really, really cool option in this segment. Thanks again. Be sure to hit like and subscribe so we can help grow this channel here on Apple Autos. Again, my name is Austin. Have a great rest of your day.